The following program is presented by the Diocese of Venice in Florida. The Diocese of Venice in Florida presents the Mass. This morning, the TV Mass comes to you from Our Lady of Perpetual Help Retreat Center along the banks of the Mayaca River in Venice, Florida. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. And with your spirit. My brothers and sisters, as we prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries on this 19th Sunday in ordinary time, let's take a moment to call to mind our sins so that we can ask the Lord for mercy. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Kyrie eleison, Kyrie eleison. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christe eleison, Christe eleison. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Kyrie eleison. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father, amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, whom taught by the Holy Spirit, we dare to call our Father. Bring, we pray, to perfection in our hearts, the spirit of adoption as your sons and daughters, that we may merit to enter into the inheritance which you have promised. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the first book of Kings. At the mountain of God, Horeb, Elijah, came to a cave where he took shelter. Then the Lord said to him, Go outside and stand on the mountain before the Lord. The Lord will be passing by. A strong and heavy wind was rending the mountains and crushing rocks before the Lord. But the Lord was not in the wind. After the wind there was an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. After the earthquake there was fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. After the fire, there was a tiny whispering sound. When he heard this, Elijah hid his face in his cloak and went and stood at the entrance of the cave. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Brothers and sisters, I speak the truth in Christ. I do not lie. My conscience joins with the Holy Spirit in bearing me witness that I have great sorrow and constant anguish in my heart. For I could wish that I myself were accursed and cut off from Christ for the sake of my own people, my kindred according to the flesh. They are Israelites. There's the adoption, the glory, the covenants, the giving of the law, the worship, and the promises. There's the patriarchs, and from them, according to the flesh, is the Christ, who is over all, God blessed forever. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. After he had fed the people, Jesus made the disciples get into a boat and precede him to the other side while he dismissed the crowds. After doing so, he went up on the mountain by himself to pray. When it was evening, he was there alone. Meanwhile, the boat, already a few miles offshore, was being tossed about by the waves, for the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, he came toward them, walking on the sea. When the disciples saw him walking on the sea, they were terrified. It is a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. At once, Jesus spoke to them, Take courage, it is I. Do not be afraid. Peter said to him in reply, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. He said, Come. Peter got out of the boat and began to walk on the water toward Jesus. But when he saw how strong the wind was, he became frightened. And beginning to sink, he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus stretched out his hand and caught Peter and said to him, O you of little faith, why did you doubt? After they got into the boat, the wind died down. Those who were in the boat did him homage, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The Gospel of the Lord. If there is a theme for the gospel that we've just heard, I would say that that theme is fear. Is there anyone out there who is not afraid of anything? Hmm? Raise your hand. Well, I can't see into your homes, but I'm pretty sure nobody raised their hand. Hmm? The wind is blowing this boat all over the place in the gospel, and the apostles are afraid. In fact, it says they're terrified a little bit later in the gospel. Jesus begins to walk toward them on the water, and they cry out in fear. Can you imagine these big fishermen who have seen just about everything on the water crying out in fear? You know, fear is sometimes a good thing because it can alert you to danger. Every time I drive on Interstate 75, I get a little bit afraid. And that's good because it makes me more careful. If I had no fear, you know, no fear at all, I might have had an accident by now. But there's another kind of fear that isn't good. It's the kind of fear that stops you from doing what God wants you to do or drives you to do the opposite. Some of you may have hoarded groceries and paper products during the early days of the pandemic. In most cases, there was no shortage, 
until people driven by fear created the shortage. Some people are afraid of going to confession. They think to themselves, what will Father think of me if I confess this terrible sin? The truth is that Father isn't even going to remember the sin because he's heard the sin so many times before. But that fear keeps some people away. That kind of fear is useless. The devil uses it to keep us from doing what God wants us to do and becoming what God wants us to be. I would be willing to bet that there are many people watching right now who have sensed that God is calling them to do something or to change something in their life, but they still have not taken the first step to doing it. And the reason is that you're afraid. And so what do we do? What do we do when we realize that we're afraid of doing something that is good, something that God wants us to do? Well, this is what the gospel today teaches us, especially through Peter. Peter is just as afraid as all the other apostles. They don't know whether to believe that this is Jesus or that this is a ghost. But Peter does something that none of the other apostles do in that boat. He calls out to Jesus. He calls out to Jesus. He says, Lord, if it is you, command me to come to you on the water. I'd like to suggest, brothers and sisters, that when we're afraid of doing the good that lies in front of us, the first thing that we need to do is to call out to Jesus the way Peter does in this gospel. And we do that through prayer, honest prayer. Jesus, I am afraid of what my family will say if they know the truth. Jesus, I'm afraid of this terrible disease that seems to be sweeping the world. Jesus, I'm afraid of losing my job. What do we do next after we pray? Well, again, look at Peter. He calls out to Jesus. Jesus says, come. And Peter takes a step onto the water. It's that first step that is the hardest, isn't it? Some psychologists say that the biggest risk that a person takes in their entire life is their first step as a baby. And Peter takes that first step onto the water. After you call out to God, the way that it usually works is that God gives you the strength to take the next good step. Just the next step. Now, you know what happens next in this gospel. Things don't turn out very well. Peter gets afraid again, and he starts to sink. But what happens after that is beautiful. Jesus, it says, at once. The gospel says, at once, Jesus reaches out and catches Peter. I can't guarantee that things will be easy after you take that first step. But I can guarantee you that whatever happens, Jesus will be there to catch you if you fall. The moment that you completely entrust yourself to Jesus, Jesus assumes complete responsibility for everything that happens after that point. This gospel has a beautiful ending. It ends with everyone on the boat glorifying God. And you will glorify God for what happens in your life too. If you're willing to pray, Face your fear, call out to Jesus, and take the next good step. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary 
and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Aware of God's quiet presence at work in our lives, we place our needs before him. For Pope Francis, Bishop Duane, all bishops, priests, and religious, may God give them the grace to completely of themselves for his kingdom, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For those in positions of leadership in the judicial system, may the Holy Spirit guide their hearts as they balance justice and mercy we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. For an end to the coronavirus pandemic, may the Holy Spirit guide and inspire everyone working to curtail the virus, we pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Father, hear and answer these prayers we have offered today. For we ask them through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God. The mystery of this water and wine, may we come to share in the divinity of Christ, who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Be God Most spirit and country hearts may we be accepted by you, Lord. May our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity. Cleanse me from my sins. Pray, friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Be pleased, O Lord, to accept the offerings of your church, for in your mercy you have given them to be offered, and by your power you transform them into the mystery of our salvation through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death, and by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, 
by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take this all of you and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Frank, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, amen, amen. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. The kingdom and the power and the glory now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. 
Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. May the receiving of your body and blood, Lord Jesus Christ, not bring me to judgment and condemnation, but through your loving mercy, be for me protection in mind and body and a healing remedy. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. The body of Christ keep me safe for eternal life. Let us pray. May the communion in your sacrament that we have consumed save us, O Lord, and confirm in us the light of your truth. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. Remaining connected to the church and your local parish is critical during the coronavirus pandemic. Please consider a donation to this televised mass or to your local parish by visiting dioceseofvenice.org slash ways to give. Your contribution may also be sent to the Diocese of Venice at 1000 Pinebrook Road, Venice, Florida, 34285. And you can view this Mass anytime on the Diocese of Venice website. Visit dioceseofvenice.org and click on the Televised Mass button.